Hi there, Adam Small here with Agent Sauce, and this is the Real Estate Marketing Podcast. With me today is Doug Carr of DK New Media. How are you, sir? Doing well, and you? Fantastic. On our last podcast, we talked about maybe doing something along the lines of the future of real estate marketing, real estate technology, that sort of thing. And you just got back from a conference out in Las Vegas with Dell, right? Yes, I was at uh, Dell EMC World. Okay, so uh, tell us a a little bit about what the general concept of the conference was and, and, and what you saw. Well, D- D- I think the first thing is for people that don't realize, Dell actually owns a bunch of different companies. They own, like, uh, Dell, of course, which is our laptops and then servers that are, you know, in data centers and everything. And then, um, and then they have EMC, which is a storage specialty company. Right. They so, bought them up a few years back. Yeah, and then they have a security company, SecureWorks. They have Pivotal, which is a development company, a rapid development company. And so, there, if you could look across the spectrum of technology, they kind of hit every single, you know, every everything out there in relation to IT. <clears throat> world, you yeah. know, information technology, infrastructure, as yeah. well as services around the infrastructures, and right? And they're, they uh, they were a public company. Now they're private again. Right. They went private. Uh, uh, didn't Michael Dell buy it yeah. back? Yeah. And so they're, uh, which is just now they're growing like crazy and they don't have to, they can focus on technology instead of focusing on shareholders and stuff. So it's uh, providing right. them a level of freedom that, that, uh, that is really exciting i mean some of the stuff that they were working on there you know just you know they they were they developed special servers with intel uh to map dna right so (laughs) so servers geared just for the one purpose of mapping the dna and they and they and and some of the the headway on that is like some of the computations would take like 22 hours before now take like two minutes Yeah, yeah um so the, we're talking about like I I think the message today to everybody like we're not going to talk specifically about we can talk a little bit about specific to real estate and what's what's happening out there but for the most part is you know technology as a whole we're heading into another phase of accelerated technology advancement right I I, I recall you talking about you, you know at one point there was a, a massive leap forward when we hit the internet right right. It was this huge boom and businesses started uh, being able to reach out beyond just their local town and and uh, yeah. their local area just because of the free access of the internet. So it created a boom in businesses, a whole new business model, e-commerce and, yeah. and all that stuff, right? And, you know, it's kind of leveled off a little bit insofar as where that is. Right. Um, but then you were talking about, you know, we're about to make another giant leap forward. Yeah. And, and so for, you know, real estate agents out there, you remember that, right? If you didn't make the move from, let's say print to digital and online, you got left behind. Right. And, right. and so people that were savvier with social media and search and digital and email marketing and mobile, they wind up taking your business from you. Right, and so we have another another phase that's really coming into uh, effect, and and some of it we don't even know how fast we're going to be moving. But I'll talk a little bit about it. And one is, you know, as you're sitting there, I don't want to go over people's heads, but when you work on a laptop, let's say, when you boot up a laptop, what's literally happening is the operating system is loading things into memory for you to you know run the display and interact with the computer and then when you say file save it's saving that back to a hard drive right well that's going to go away in the next few years we have what's called persistent flash memory and literally you won't have that back and forth your computer won't boot up you'll just open the lid and it'll be on it'll just be on yeah just like your phone's same way if you unplug it and plug it back in, it'll be exactly where it left off. Right, right. And so that's a huge, huge boon to the industry because it's less memory, less computing, less uh, CPU needed. And and so these these systems are just going to be, inc- you know, extremely fast. And that makes way for things like machine learning and artificial intelligence where now we can actually teach computers to develop their own algorithms and develop their own, you know, uh, 
patterns for deciding things. So like that might be useful in like a search mechanism, right? Yeah. Um, this particular family has been looking at, uh, you know, or say this, this computer, this terminal, whatever has been looking at homes that are in this price range, this many uh, bedrooms, this many bathrooms, this size yard, that sort of thing. And, you know, without being told specifically that that's what this person is looking for, it can look at the history of that and kind of analyze it. And you can do some of that now, yeah. but you know, it may be able to pick up on greater nuances of, oh, they really don't want a pool. Even right. though some of the houses had pools, they really don't want one. Uh, they may have a dog because they're looking at a certain size yard. You yeah. know, make some inferences based yeah, right, on right now that we, sort of thing, right? Right now we hit all those filters, right? Pool right. on, pool off. That right. And and in the future, it would be that as you continue seeing spending more and more time on some pictures than others, the system will know. The system will know. Well, that one had a pool in it, so let's let's keep showing more ones with pools that right. had four bedroom. They like the four bedroom over the three bedroom and you're not actually interacting. It's just literally it's, it's on picking up on or, cues. You know, your, yeah. your, it's picking up, it's learning from your it's activity learning from and behavior, your activity, right. behaviors. Right. And so, so these systems are going to be so fast. That's one big thing. Artificial intelligence. A lot of people always talk about robots when they Terminator, yeah, Terminator. I'll be back, but that's not really where the, where the fascinating stuff is. The fascinating stuff is in artificial intelligence. And that's that, you know, systems are gonna be able to, you know, predict when to send emails and when to, I know you're messing with this stuff too, that right. it's already out there. Um, and, and so it's, it's just really fascinating that uh, right now everything is interruptive and we predict we try to predict when people are gonna like read the newsletter and everything else in the future there'll be so many cues and everything that literally the system can send it at the right time and the system it's gonna can, say hey you know yeah. what this email is going to adam the best time to reach yeah. him is at you know 9 p.m yeah. on a wednesday night and he so never, i'm gonna send it then and he never clicks through on that content so don't show that content anymore right. to him right you know but do yeah. show it over here to yeah. to Kimberly, because she really likes right. that content. Yeah. Right. And, and today to program something like that is millions of dollars, but just like programming. Well, and it's, it's slower too, right? Yeah. Because the, the right. computational power required to process through right. all of the rules and, and all that stuff just, it takes a long time but to it's get just there. Like mobile tours five years ago would cost you $50,000, right? Now it's, you know, right. It's, it's, it's a standard it's, now, it's you know, standard. if your tour is yeah. not mobile optimized then right. you know, people are like, oh, okay, I'm going to move on look at something else because it's no good. You so know, it's expected these days. Right. So, so think, okay. So the acceleration of, you know, the, the ability to harness so much power in these computers is one piece. Artificial intelligence is obviously with that because it really frees up, you know, the, the, the ability to learn natural language processing, understanding speech, all of those pieces are, are accelerating. Then the other piece that's happening at the same time is you might have heard the term IoT or Internet of Things. And Internet of Things is basically um, that everything we have is starting to talk to the Well, it's internet. connected, yeah, it's right? Yeah, connected to the Internet. But we've we've only just begun. Like if, if you go into your car let's say your car might have 200 different sensors all of them speak to if you have OnStar, right all of them are sending you know information back to to the you know back to the uh company to the cloud the cia and uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and those guys and uh, and so uh, like a car is a perfect example and now iot isn't they predict isn't something that all of a sudden is going to explode in growth but what's happening is we're already seeing an acceleration in that. Now, where it gets amazing is you might five years from now walk into a restaurant and when you sit down at the seat, that's when they bring your menus out because they were alerted that someone sat in a seat. They bring your beer out to you at the table and when your beer is down to the last sixth of the glass, the glass alerts them that it's, it's time, time to, to refill, refill it, yeah, yeah. you know, and, and so some of the stuff that they're even testing now, like they described a, uh, uh, they were in, in, uh, Israel, they were testing with cows. They had, they had, they have computers in cows that are testing their bloodstream and nutrition 
and they're altering the feed based on the coagulation of the milk so that they can make cows basically produce better milk that produces better cheese. So they're optimizing the cow's milk for cheese, cheese production versus, you know, another optimization might be for better tasting yeah. milk when you want to drink it. Right. Yeah. And now when you think about that, that, that sounds crazy, but then you start thinking about, well, are they on the North side of the field facing the sun or the south side of the field and what impact does the weather have with that so every cow's geographic location is also a part of it what they're eating at that section is how long they're staying outside how much exercise they're getting and you start looking at this and you got a herd of cows that's terabytes of data that's for each cow almost yeah <laughs> you know, that's, so. that's going through the system but it's happening like this is and it's effective it's increasing yield and, yeah. and creating better tasting that, cheeses and that's, and, and that's the trick so a lot of people always get scared of this you know where where is this going and you know who's gonna right be, um kind of like a gattaca sort of thing i don't yeah. know if you recall the gattaca movie yeah. but you know they they were every child was engineered essentially yeah. right and if you were born naturally then you were going to have whatever flaws. defects you may have right. flaws right and and so you had a lot harder time accelerating in that environment yeah. uh, you know so when and we're going to have we're going to have some similar issues they 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 do believe that you know that there's a there's a the problem that they're seeing is that a part of humanity will you know have a more difficult time adopting to that technology and then you know we're lucky enough to live in in, in a first world country where we adopt it and there's no problem but I'll, I'll, one of the things I want to say about that is one of the things that they always talk about is, well, it's going to take jobs. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. And you just pointed to the big impact. The big impact is efficiency and price. Right. So the fact is, is that cheese could cost half the amount if... Because the yield is twice as much. Exactly. Right. And so so there's a side to this that people often don't pay attention. They, 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 they always look at the nightmare scenario of you know this is going to take everybody's jobs everything's going to be automated but they don't look at you know if robot if if mcdonald's was all robotics and everything else the price of a big mac might drop to 29 cents right because right. well you're not having to pay for the labor and all that exactly and, and so i saw this the other day and it basically we've only really ever lost one job in the last hundred years or so due to technological innovations and that was the elevator operator Right. Every other job is still there. If you look at the government listing of jobs, right. Very interesting. All of the jobs are still there. Um, they've morphed some, you know, adjusted some. But really and truly, the only job that's been removed from that list of government jobs, you know, when you do your yeah, taxes, right, yeah, yeah. is is uh, interesting. Is, is literally the elevator <laughs> operator. You know, so yeah. so innovation. I'm trying to think like how know, long ago, like where we, because blacksmith had to be. But they're still out there. Well, right. They're it's still not totally they're, lost. Right. It, it's, uh, you know, a lot of that, though, is it, it's just a change job. Yeah. It's not well, necessarily and that's, a and lost that's job. So, so, so the, the next economy, everything could be actually, you know, the, you know, talking 10 years, 20 years ahead, right. everything could be so inexpensive that you really don't have a poverty class because, and even now, when you look at the United States, you know, the average person in poverty has a refrigerator, uh, air conditioning, uh, television and internet, right? You know, that's our poverty, you know? Right. And so how did that come around? Well, it happened with technological, you know, advancements that, uh, a 42 inch TV now costs $99, you know, it, where it used to cost, you know, $8,000 right, five years right, ago. Right. And so it, it, it's really interesting now for specific to real estate, it really does kind of open up some incredible opportunities, you know, that I saw, I saw an article that, um, some of the large mansions out west had drone tours. Right. And so the drone is pre-programmed to basically do a tour of the house mm -hmm. and you in a remote location can activate the drone and do a tour of the house. Right. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's virtual, incredible. With virtual reality, with augmented reality. Augmented reality. Yeah. That, I think that's more of a, well, I mean, well, that wouldn't, 
Would that be, be augmented or virtual? It'd be virtual. Yeah. It'd be virtual, if you're, right? If you're in, if you're totally immersed, it's virtual. So right, right, right. And, so, and um, so, but even augmented reality is another avenue entirely yeah. as well. You know, when you walk into a place, uh, you know, one thing I'd really love to see would be you walk into a place and, and uh, you can look at your phone and it would say, oh, you know, it would have highlighting pieces of the room, you know. So yeah. if, you know, if that's a stone fireplace that's been there for 150 years or whatever it's something really unique about it you know the marbles yeah. from italy and and that right. sort of stuff you could literally walk through a place yourself and, and have that explained to you well and you that's know? So. and that's you know where where this internet of things and computing power accelerates everything is, right um l let's say you, your uh, water heater is broken right you put on your glasses and it dials up you know, it, it dials into the HVAC repair or home repair service mm -hmm. and the home repair service, you know, basically analyzes it, shows you what's wrong and might even show you how to fix it right, yourself. Right. Like, right. <laughs> you know, well, and, and you're seeing how you're going to fix it in the glasses right. as you're fixing it. Right. And have you, have you seen the commercial on TV um, with uh, IBM's Watson, right? It, the elevator repairman shows up to repair elevator three. Oh yeah. And the guy's yeah. like, well, oh, there's nothing wrong with elevator. And they're already three. testing that, you know, I've and, seen and that they, exactly. They, they already have elevators now that are, are t in fact, there's a Twitter account where you can watch the elevators talking. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I'll have yes. to have a look at that, but you know, it's predictive, right? Yeah. It's uh, you know, we know that in the meantime between failures for these things is this, and then we've got sensors that are connected here and they're telling us, Oh, you know what? This is, this is weakening. There's a problem here. The yeah. voltage is off, whatever it may be. So we need to get somebody out there now so that, you know, we don't have an issue later. Right. When, and for real estate agents, what I would say is, you know, this is going to transform your lives too, right? Today we do a, you know, text message, when right. we're standing out front of the thing, but the, you know, the scene of tomorrow might be that someone, you know, walks up to the door and knocks on the door. There's a IOT device that identifies that it's a prospect, you know, your face comes up on a, on, you know, your real estate agent. You could up. do a, a, a remote tour yeah, yeah. with, with the prospect exactly. without ever leaving exactly. your office. You could unlock the door. You could, the, the, and the, and the conversation might start through AI. Right. So it's not even you really talking. Right. It's someone questioning that person, looking right. up their data. Well, you're talking if, a chat bot Seeing there, if right? they're possibly a qualified buyer, you know, like doing uh -huh. all of that without you before ever you ever get involved up, with it right you know? yeah and and so i think these are things that these aren't dreams you no. know these these are things that are going to come to to market you know within the next five to ten years because right. of this mass acceleration that we're going to see right yeah you know it's funny because what comes to mind for me is that how using technology actually shrinks the world right yeah. and what i mean by that is uh you know if you have the ability to do a remote tour with a, with a group, right. Then as long as your technology can reach that listing, yeah, it could be next door or it could be all the way around the it world. Could. Right. Absolutely. And I'm not saying that, you know, necessarily that a real estate agent from in Indianapolis might be able to sell a home in Florida per right. se, but you know, they could reach out all the way across the state without having to make a two and a half, three hour drive. Right. 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 Um, and interact and answer questions about things. Right. So, um, it's definitely going to accelerate your business that way. Change yeah. the way that we're doing business nowadays. And you know, the, the good thing for a real estate agent is if it, it's going to allow you to focus on your customer more and more. Right. And less and less on the technology, you know, right, right. and that's the promise of it is we're at a state now where, you know, your average real estate agent, I'm sure is doing a ton of paperwork, data entry, um, you know, and then, and then in their spare time showing houses, right, right. you know, well, the promise of technology is always that you can do less and less of the, of that well, the promise is that it's an enabler, and yeah. unfortunately, sometimes yeah. you run into a situation where it's kind of a disabler right. because exactly. you know it breaks, or you don't understand how it's supposed to work, right. or you expect more and of so, it than it's designed to do. Right. And so, real estate agents should be spending more time networking, more time 
building relationships with their customers and then the systems will enable that you know and and accelerate it right you know, right, so that right they they they're always you know just filling their time with what matters right and right. that's the you know st- stuff and there's even stuff now like ai bots that were you know that people are messing with where someone might have a question and the 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 chats are they're still a little bit dumb right now right. but someone asks you a question on your website and your website actually responds to them and it's not you, you right know, it's well and those are growing now yeah. they're, they're they're picking up and you're right some of them are a little bit dumb now yeah. but um in part that's because the mechanisms that they use to feed the data to them isn't as right. sophisticated as it needs to be you know but it's so, but even that like you you think about how many people there. visit your site every day if you could say hi to every single one of them and figure out whether they were a qualified lead or not would right. be awesome. Right. But you just can't do that today. Right. But but it's coming around the corner. It you know, is. So. Yeah. So, okay. So what else did you see? Well, what, what, what was probably the, the thing that was uh, most amazing to you that you saw at Dell EMC World? I, I mean, uh, the whole autonomous, you know, world that we're going to live in and that's, you know, that planes will fly themselves and mm-hmm. cars will drive themselves that that whole piece of it is pretty intriguing where um it's safer right like human error is what drives most planes into the ground not not systems <laughs> right it yeah is. you really got to trust the guy up front right but but you know humanity has to advance where you feel safe just getting into a plane with nobody flying and saying yeah okay plane take me <laughs> yeah. home right yeah you know, or yeah. a car you know there's right. that element of you know and then there's a really cool scientific side that says do they actually calculate like if there's going to be a five car pile up will right. your car kill you to save more people Oh, that's the uh, uh, Asimov's laws, yeah. right? You know, yeah. what, what, what's the, the better uh, uh, yeah. benefit? Of, yeah. 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 So. so, but, you know, but, but even still, uh, I think some of that stuff is, again, uh, quality of life is just going to drastically improve. Not that we don't already have it made, but just that this technology is going to reach a point where we have help making the right decisions we have help with the work that we don't like doing we have you know systems that are uh, always on you know uh, when you when you plug your razor into into an electrical uh, outlet nowadays you don't wonder whether it has electricity or not well 50 years ago you did yeah 50 years ago it wasn't it was flaky and right you right. had candles everywhere in your house and everything well the same is happening with the internet is you don't ever look at your open Facebook and wonder whether it's going to be there or not. Right. It's, it's now getting to this point where the redundancy and security and everything is so good that, uh, that, you know, we're, we're an always on society. Well, and, and even beyond that, you know, we've, uh, wireless has been a major piece of that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, I remember 20 years ago I was working with a company and they were wanting to, uh, um, from Sweden, I think it was, you know, take a camera around and show it to a, a production, you know, take, take video of production and stream it back to the U S so that the engineers in the U S could look at it and help them identify problems. Right. Yeah. But the thing is they didn't have wireless, right. right. They didn't have it in the, in the office. They didn't have high speed internet and, and you know, ultimately it just wasn't going to work because video is so bandwidth intensive. But nowadays, everywhere you go, you expect to have wireless. I mean, you and walk it, into to Starbucks, you walk into Walmart, you walk in almost everywhere and there's free wireless I, I available. Asked, um, I asked one of the, the CTOs of one of the companies, I said, are, are we going to reach a, you know, kind of that danger precipice where we're producing so much data and so much stuff right. that there's nowhere to put it. And he said, nope. They're always developing said, greater storage capacity. I, I was amazed at his, his response. He was talking about like even, you know, uh, LTE and, you know, what uh, our, our Wi-Fi on our phones, that that, uh, that that cellular and mobile, that was developed five years ago. Right, right. And, and just implemented. And he was talking how the next three phases are already done. It's just that, you know, it'll roll out as needed. Right. But we're already way ahead of the problems that we know that, that we're going to run into. Right. 
I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that we were that far ahead. I thought that we were, you know, right now innovating for today. Yeah. We're not. Right we're now innovating we're innovating for, innovating tomorrow. for five years from now, which right. is pretty fascinating. And so these guys, in fact, uh, uh, one of the major messages of the of the conference was was basically companies like Dell are actually pushing their clients forward uh-huh. instead of the opposite. Like, you know how most technology, it's, you you know, you yell at your... It's driven by a problem, yeah, right? It's a solution at, to a problem. You yell at Comcast because you are you have slow internet. Right. Well, with companies like Dell, it's the opposite problem. Dell is going to the companies and saying, look, you have to upgrade to this because that's going to open up budget for you to invest in these things down the road. Trust us. We'll get you there. You'll see the savings. And we're gambling on it because... Because we're, you know, we want you to buy that next big thing. Right. And so it's pretty fascinating how how these these companies are really pushing. They're pushing the clients, you know, to advance their technology. It's wild. So they're 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 driving the clients to they improve, are. and they're driving not only are they driving the clients to improve, but, you know, and you could say, well, they just want the sale, right? But it's really not about that because what no, it really is is no, that they it's helping the clients money. by right. That's what I was getting at. So 20, thanks for tw- cutting me off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, and and they've proven right. it. Like if if they if they um, if they modernize a, you know a large company's infrastructure, that company will hit a twenty four percent savings on average. Twenty. That's a significant that's, amount of money. That's a huge amount of money. Right. Right. And so Dell wants them to do that because that frees up budget then for that can be experimenting, spent. innovating, everything else. Right. And so yeah, you've got. I mean, a lot of people think like, well, Dell, they just want to sell more computers. Well, the, the interesting thing is Dell owns like VMware, right. which is a virtualization, which helps you buy less computers. Right. Right. And they work together because they know that. If they're going to compete in the not future. only buy less but buy cheaper to, to run the Absolutely. same performing yeah. right right and so a lot of what we think of as these you know juggernauts or you know whatever you call it of these titans of industry right man they're ahead of us and they're making things cheaper faster quicker more reliable safer all of these things they're way ahead of us right you know? right so right. that was i think it's just fascinating for real estate agents I, I just think, you know, you're going to be operating your whole business from a mobile device someday and, you know, just killing it, you know. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure a lot of agents are going to be real happy to hear that. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, you know, you said, what you mean by killing it, though, is that it's just going to be a lot easier to get through the whole process yeah. of it. It's going to be a lot easier to reach out, generate the leads, yeah. and 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 service your customer and your client I mean, base, how many, right? How many real estate agents do you know that are just amazing real estate agents? Oh, every one of them. But they struggle at technology. Oh no, I'm not going to say every one of them struggles. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. right. There, and there's there a are, lot. Right, there are a lot. And so the thing is, is the the message to those people is relief is on its way. You yeah, know, it's yeah. going to get easier and easier. It already right. is. Right. But it's going to accelerate. Right. Well, that's great. Sounds like you had a great time out there. Lots of walking. Yeah. Any final thoughts? <laughs> no, that's it. Just uh, hold on tight. All right. Well, we will do that. Doug, thanks for joining us today. Um, kind of an unconventional real estate marketing podcast, but great all the same. Uh, enjoyed it. Thanks for joining us and listening. Um, have any questions, feel free to contact us at agentsauce.com, info at agentsauce.com. Have a great day. <laughs>